Let's talk now to Fiona Sincosa, who's an analyst from City Index. Good to see you, Fiona. Welcome back to the programme. Uh, let's start with the Eurozone, uh, where overall inflation is down slightly. Are those numbers going to change anything for the European Central Bank? So I think, you know, it's encouraging numbers in the sense that it's moving in the right direction again. We had seen uh, an acceleration in inflation in previous months, so the fact that it's cooling again will be well received by policymakers. The ECB interest rate decision is tomorrow. These figures are not likely to make the ECB move and encourage them to cut rates tomorrow. Instead, they're going to want to see more, com uh, more data to um, confirm that inflation is cooling in the right direction towards that 2% target, and we're thinking that they could potentially uh, prepare the market for a rate cut in September. Well, let's look at the UK, where we also had some inflation numbers out, unchanged at 2%, uh, and those figures are something of a surprise. Yeah, I think that, so there was a little bit of an expectation that we could see inflation cooling to that 1.9%, but you know, the, the service sector inflation has been very sticky. And that's something that we know that policymakers have been watching closely. I think there is this sense that maybe the, uh, the Taylor Swift Erasmus, the Erasmus tour has really um, encouraged sort of more sticky levels of inflation. If we look into the numbers, we can see that sort of hotel and restaurant spending um, has been a lot higher this month. Um, but I think, you know, the Bank of England will continue to watch those service sector inflation figures. They will want to see those to come down before they really start cutting interest rates. They want those figures for service sector inflation, for example, to come down. Uh, when do you think that might happen? Yeah, that's the big question. You know, I think we are expecting to see it come down, but very gradually. Um, and I think for that reason, they don't want to be jumping into cutting rates prematurely for fear of inflation obviously going back up. But the other thing that they, the um, Bank of England will be watching will be wage growth, which again is staying sticky around that 6% level. We've got wage growth data due tomorrow. So the Bank of England will be watching that as well. But the expectation is that the central bank could start to cut interest rates potentially in September. Could start to cut interest rates maybe in September. Well, let's talk about the, the pound then. We've seen that break the $1.30 mark uh, for the first time in a year. What's behind that? Uh, uh, and do you think it will go higher? Yes, yeah, so basically what we're seeing here is the strength in the pound has come as investors have reined in Bank of England rate cut expectations. So at the beginning of this week, there was about a 50-50 probability that the Bank of England could cut interest rates in August. That's now been reduced to around a 30% probability. And as those expectations have been reined in, that's boosted the pound, especially against, for example, the US dollar, where we're seeing the markets are actually increasing expectations that the Federal Reserve could cut sooner. So we're now seeing 100% probability of the, um, in the markets of the Fed cutting interest rates as soon as September. So that has boosted the pound. There is a potential that we could see that go higher, the pound go higher against the US dollar, especially if we do see strong wage growth tomorrow and a slightly more hawkish sound in Bank of England at the 1st of August when they meet. Fiona, good to talk to you. Thank you for joining us. Fiona Sincotta from City Index.